Good morning, dear friends, and a warm welcome to this morning's retreat as we offer and pray for our families in a special way in connection to the Feast of the Holy Family. Let us present unto Jesus each member of our family, all those who are desperately in need of our prayers, all those, especially those family members of us who are distanced from God, who are distanced from the family, all those burdens that we are carrying within our heart, all those relationships that are broken, all our children who require the Lord's mercy, let's present them all to Jesus today as we pray and ask the Lord to bless, to heal, and to comfort our families. Let us all kneel as we invite Jesus in the Blessed Sacrament. We are at the fag end of this year. Our hearts are meant to be filled with thanksgiving. Thanksgiving for everything the Lord has blessed us with. For whatever the Lord has provided us, provided our families. To be able to stop a while, to turn, look back and be grateful. So often we turn, we look back and we are complaining. We are upset about what didn't happen, what we didn't receive, what went wrong, what troubled us, what should have been. There's so many things that we turn, we look back and we complain about. It's so important for us to stop a while, turn and look back and with great thanksgiving in our hearts, Acknowledge the God who provided for us, a God who protected us, a God who journeyed with us. How important that becomes in our relationship with our Lord, that I can stop, turn and look back and thank the Lord for everything. We would be an ungrateful set of people who turn back, looked, complained that we can't do the things we did before. We can't enjoy the comforts we had before. We don't have the success we had before. If we kept looking back and regretting, we would never be happy. Look back and remember how God provided for us. Look back and remember how God protected us. Look back and remember how the Lord at the right time spoke to us through different people and put us on the right path. Look back and remember how the Lord permitted us to do what we did, to have the successes we had, to have had the health that we had. For all of that the Lord gave us, provided for us, permitted us to have, let us have a heart of thanksgiving. As we adore the Lord in the blessed sacrament, let it be an adoration that is filled with thanksgiving, O sacrament most holy.
with your families with a grateful heart you adore O sacrament For all that he has provided your family. For the blessings within your family. Accept our praises Lord. Hallelujah Jesus. We praise you Lord. We worship you. We adore your holy name, O Jesus. Hallelujah. Shabra Malaga. Shantharari, Arari, Arari. I praise you, Jesus. We worship you. We adore you, Jesus. We glorify your holy name. We praise you, O Jesus, along with the whole church of God today. We praise you along with this community that has come together to pray and adore. We praise you, Jesus, for the gift of life. We praise you for the gift of family, O oh Jesus. We praise you for the gift of health, O oh Jesus. We praise you for the gift of our voices, O oh Jesus. Everything that we can lift up to you. We thank you, O oh Jesus. We praise you, O oh Jesus. We thank you for the gift of this day, O oh Jesus. We thank you for everything that will happen during this day and you will bless, O oh Jesus. We praise you, O oh Father, for giving your beloved Son to us. We praise you, O oh Son, for providing us with the protection of the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Jesus. We praise you, Jesus. We adore your holy name, O oh Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Praise you, Lord. Worship you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. For all your blessings. For all your graces. Jeremiah, Mansi, Shalini, I will walk with you through the valley of darkness, says the Lord, and I will be your light. Premanita Matthews Don't be afraid of what lies ahead The struggles in your family responsibility And the pathways they are taking You trust in the Lord Those with breast cancer, the left breast, the Lord is touching, healing. Someone suffering from bronchitis, the Lord is healing. Preeti, the love that you have for your children, the Lord understands. Even if others do not see it or acknowledge it, know that the Lord understands it. Rashes all over the hands, 
the Lord is touching and healing. Someone's home, there's a danger that the bank will auction it off. You're terribly worried, not having a place to stay. The Lord will open new doors for you. All those doors that remained closed in the past, those doors will open up for you. Someone is struggling to pay the university fees for your son's education. You do not know from where the next bit of funds are going to come. Do not be afraid. Your son is protected by the Lord. Your son will be provided for by the Lord. Someone who's had a problem of sinusitis because of a crookedness in your nose and the bone that's protruding, the Lord is touching it. Mabel, your body might be weak, but your soul is very strong. Your prayers are blessed. Continue to pray with great faith. Let us pray and offer our homes into the presence of Jesus. Let the whole house be filled with His glory. Let the whole home be covered with His mercy. Every room, every single person in the home, every space in that home, especially those spaces that have never been sanctified or purified. Let the whole home be filled with the Lord's glory. Are you feeling disturbed about things happening in the home? Maybe disturbed about certain things, strange things taking place in your home and you're confused about it? Pray now. Let the glory of the Lord fill your home. Let your anointing fill this space. Let your glory fill this home. Let your presence fill our heart. Let each vessel offer unto you the sacrifice of praise. Let your glory fill this hall. Let your presence fill our hearts. Let The sacrifice of praise You, Lord, are holy You, Lord, are worthy You deserve the glory You alone. 
offering up our homes and making it a sacred space for God for God to work in his own way in ways that will bring blessedness into our home grace into our home sacred fruits into our home that's a space where God would love the Lord would love to be with us in deep intimacy let our homes not be places of pride of selfishness of bitterness anger confusions disturbances godlessness prayerlessness let it not be spaces where the evil one thrives let our homes be cleansed let our homes be purified let our homes be anointed with the lord's glory let every room in our home every space in our home let it be filled with god's glory let your glory fill this space jesus let your glory fill this place let your presence fill our heart let it wrestle of A sacrifice of praise Let your glory fill our home Let your presence fill our life Let each vessel offer unto you A sacrifice fires of praise you Lord are holy you Lord are worthy you deserve the glory Jesus you Yes, Lord, let your glory be upon my home. Let your glory rest upon my home. Whatever happens in my house, whatever decision is taken in my home, whatever we do as individuals or as a family in our home, let it glorify your holy name let your glory be seen let people who come to my home know and understand whose glory is there humble us lord that we might never steal that glory from you that we might not seek our glory in our home. Let that glory always be yours. As it was for the, for the holy family. The holy family's glory was in you, Jesus. They permitted that to happen mother you pray for us that we too in our homes will seek and desire the glory of God to rest upon us 
Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Kindly be seated. Our brothers and sisters testify for the glory of God. Belinda from Goa testifies since June 2023. Life in the morning hours begin with the Divine Colombo retreats. I and my family are blessed with many blessings. This testimony is about my daughter who is studying in a first year medicine in Europe, who was struggling with her studies. And although spending hours in preparation for her exams, she was not able to secure good scores and was feeling very disappointed. Her sad face and her sleepless worries bothered me. I surrendered her studies into our Lord, Lord's hand and prayed for my daughter with faith, seeking wisdom, memory, knowledge and understanding. Today as I write this testimony, I feel so grateful for the Lord has helped her to pass her exams exceptionally well, clearing every credit exam successfully. I praise and thank Jesus for his blessings. Hallelujah. 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 Delise Asirwadam from Candy. I have been having bad sinusitis for the past four months. I had been to the doctor many times, but every medication they gave me only made it worse. Last Thursday, the 14th of December, Father announced that Jesus is healing and blessing a person suffering from sinusitis. I cried and claimed it for myself. I was surprised that the next morning I did not have a headache or a nose block and henceforth there has been no problems at all for me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Dilani Jaisuria from Colombo on the 26th of Jan, 2023. Fathers officiated at the healing service at St. Mary's in Daiwala. I had a severe pain on both my knees and I could barely walk. During the adoration, Father called out my name, Dilani, you're being healed. And I claimed it and received it and the pain vanished. From that time onwards, I've been able to walk smoothly without a problem at all. I thank and praise Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Dear brothers and sisters, we thank the Lord along with our friends as they praise and thank Jesus. We thank the Lord with them. It's also a reminder to us and a comfort to us that the Lord will continue to bless us as well. And so we will never be disappointed or dejected, especially when we see miracles happening in someone else's life. Let us rejoice. One like the Blessed Mother or like Elizabeth, both of them who rejoiced in the joy of the other. Rejoice in the joys of someone else. And it also becomes a reminder to us that the Lord it's only a bit of time and the Lord will start working in his own ways according to his own understanding in our families as well. Please do send in your testimonies of whatever it is, your life changes, your family changes that have taken place with these retreats or the healings or miracles that have happened. Please do send it in at our testimonies.drcc at gmail.com. As we've been praying during these days for our families, especially praying for the, uh, as we are going towards the Feast of the Holy Family, which is uh, uh, tomorrow. Yep, it's tomorrow Sunday, yes. Uh, it is tomorrow. It's supposed to be today. It's, um, uh, the date is usually the 30th. Um, but at the same time, if the, if the um, uh, feast falls within the octave, or a Sunday that is within the octave of Christmas, then it is celebrated on the Sunday and so it will be celebrated tomorrow. But today we pray in a special way for our families as well. We've been praying for our parents, we prayed for our spouses, we prayed for our children, we prayed for our siblings during the past few days. Today let us pray for all the elders in our families either our grandparents, 
some great grandparents those who are elders in our families our uncles and aunts who are elders in the family it is very essential especially in today's society where we live in a society where the elderly are looked at as a burden that people end up having to carry and so asking ourselves what our attitudes are towards our elderly that will make a huge difference in the graces that actually flow into our families human beings in within our own human nature we grow weak over a period of time our faculties grow um lesser it becomes weaker it is not as strong as it as it was before and when we do when we see these changes in people around us especially the elders in our family when we see the changes taking place their bodily functions becoming weaker their minds becoming weaker and they are not as sharp as they were before what attitudes do we have towards them in the book of sirach we read Sirach chapter 3 verse 12 this speaking about parents but you can you can apply it to any elder in your family my child help your father in his old age and do not grieve him as long as he lives even if his mind fails be patient with him because you have all your faculties do not despise him how apt it is for a society today that finds the weaknesses the physical weaknesses the mental weaknesses of the elder elders in our families as a burden just because we are stronger just because our, our bodies are stronger our faculties are sharper and therefore we end we end up have we end up having an attitude where we the little the ones who are elder to us who are weaker today at one point remember it was because of them that we are what we are today so to be able to stop a while and look back at these people who made us who we are there should never be a tear that falls from their eyes because of the way we treat them the way we look at their weaknesses their bodily weaknesses their their mental weaknesses their maybe even their habitual weaknesses there should never be a tear that falls from their eyes because that tear will reach the heavens god has given us into the care of our elders when we were little babies born into our homes to our parents into a family with grandparents with elderly uncles and aunts so the lord knew who he was giving us to then we need to ask ourselves do i have the attitude where all my faculties are intact and i despise my elders because their faculties are not good enough it goes on to say for kindness to a father will not be forgotten and will be credited to you against your sins in the day of your distress it will be remembered in your favor how you deal with your elders will be remembered in your favor god will remember it so whatever you are doing in the way that you look at them the way you approach them makes will make a huge difference in the way you live your own life and in the way you can you you take your family your own family forward do we have an attitude of looking at our elders as a burden someone i need to care for and i'm finding it difficult to care for them i'm finding it a burden to care for them true it is difficult to care for our our elderly sometimes our own responsibilities our own workspaces makes it impossible for us to give good care for our elders in that situation if we are placing them in a home or a place where they will get better care that is understandable but am i dumping the elders in my family into a home because they are a hindrance to my success story they are a hindrance to my career 
they are a problem that I have to have to get rid of. So often we get to see this in aged homes. I'm not saying everyone who puts their their elders in an aged home are people who are doing it out of spite. There are people who are doing it also because they find that they have better care over there. That is perfectly okay. But if you are putting your elders in your in an aged home because you feel that they are a burden for you to carry, that's a trouble for you, and then there is no connection once you go and leave them there. I remember taking a set of young children who were doing their catechism, their confirmation. They were preparing themselves for. I was a brother at that time, and we were in Bangalore. And I took them to an aged home, and we went over there with these little children. And there was so much of sadness in the face of so many of those elderly. When the children came, the children sat with them. Small children, they sat with them. the elderly just loved that experience and you could you could make out how much they craved for family so many of them saying that they haven't seen their family members for months and months nobody comes to visit they just sit in those homes it's something we need to ask ourselves how are we treating the elders in our homes just because they are not as sharp as they were before just because their bodies have become weak we read in leviticus chapter 19 verse 32 the book of leviticus chapter 19 verse 32 you shall rise before the aged and honor the face of the old man you shall rise before the aged and honor the face of an old man do not forget them do not despise them because god does not despise them today's society devalues them and that is why so often we see we see it very often in the western world but it's catching up in the other parts of the world as well where we devalue their life life is today considered as valuable only if i'm able to contribute something physically am i able to bring money into the home am i able to do jobs in the house am i able to function by myself only then am i considered as a person of value or of worth if not if i'm lying on a bed then i'm not contributing anything in certain in certain countries when they even take their their budgets and they budget things they make statements of this nature where we have elderly who have nothing to contribute to the society so they are basically draining away the resources of the nation so we have a society that looks at the elderly as a burden that is from where the whole concept sometimes starts about of of what they call as mercy killers killing in i put that in inverted comma mercy killing because your life is not worth it you're not contributing any more so it's better that you do not live in this world any more that's the kind of society we have we have moved into today where a person's worth is dependent on what they contribute to society a person's worth is far deeper than that we are not just physical beings we are also spiritual beings there is not just a physical realm there is a spiritual realm as well so there is not only a physical realm in which i contribute there is a spiritual realm in which i am contributing as well that will not be seen that will not be recognized especially by a godless society it will never be recognized never get pulled into that there is a spiritual contribution that is being given by every each and every one of us however healthy we are however sick we are there's a spiritual contribution that is being given and the world works on that spiritual contribution take spirituality totally all these spiritual contributions take it out totally from the world and we will get a world that is filled with anarchy 
a world filled with godlessness a world that will self destruct the spiritual contribution of each individual is what actually takes the world through absorbs so much of the negativity so let us not look at the elders within our families as burdens and devalue their life just because their faculties are not as sharp as it was before just because they are maybe lying on a bed not able to contribute anything physically i remember a family whose loved one passed away a, a grandfather in the family who passed away and the person who was affected the most was the youngest grandson he's still in school and the father came and spoke to me and said please do pray for my my son the youngest son who is really struggling because he was very close to his grandfather this grandfather for nearly 3 years has not spoken a word before his death he's paralyzed just lies on a bed he's not able to do anything for himself has a nurse who will wash and clean and the rest of the family members taking care of him but the reason why this young grandchild is struggling the most is because every day after school he would come and spend around 45 minutes just talking to his granddad his granddad can't say a word in response just looks at him is not able to move his body is not able to speak a word but every day he'll come and speak to his granddad after coming back from school that was his comfort that was his strength and that is why when the granddad passed away it's this grandson who has been affected the most there is not one word was said but there is a spiritual realm in which all of us work this person even though his body couldn't do anything and not one word was coming out there was a spiritual realm there where the grandson is connecting to the grandfather let us not devalue who we are first peter chapter 5 verse 5 says you who are younger accept the authority of your elders proverbs chapter 23 verse 22 listen to your father who gave you life and do not despise your mother when she is old let us not despise the elderly think of the elderly who are there in your homes and if at all they have passed away there are people who were there in your homes and they passed away if they were ill treated by anyone in your family today ask forgiveness if any of our elders have moved away from our families weeping sad broken because of the way they were treated irrespective of how hard they were to handle how difficult it was to handle them even because of their character of characteristic flaws and their their behavioral defects irrespective of that has any elderly person in your home grandparents grand uncles whoever it is has any elderly person felt neglected and unwanted and they have passed away today pray for them and those who are there in your homes treasure them ask for their blessings even if they are hard people to deal with and it's very natural they will be as they are becoming weaker their body is becoming weak and they are finding it harder to accept it their senses are not as sharp and they are finding it harder to accept it you will find them getting irritated even more you will find them getting angry even faster you will find them getting demanding it's fine but ask for their blessings pray for them in a special way there's a spiritual realm in which they are operating life is a cycle when a little baby is born the little baby is totally dependent on those in the family but the the little baby is operating on a spiritual realm has just come from the lord is operating on a spiritual realm life is a cycle when we become older and our bodies give up and our senses are not as sharp we are again operating totally on the spiritual realm the two the babies and the elderly are ones who operate on a spiritual realm 
let us never despise them let us pray for them ask for their blessings let us all kneel there is no glory in despising our elderly says the book of sirach remember your father and your mother in their old age just because their senses are weak do not despise them says the book of sirach just because you have your faculties intact do not despise them who do not If you have your elderly parents, elderly grandparents, an uncle and aunt at home, maybe uncle and aunts who don't have a family themselves. If they are with you, hold their hand, say a prayer for them. If they are right next to you if your grandparent is there next to you give them a hug put your hands around their shoulders let them feel the warmth and the love of the spirit flow into them from you their bodies are weak at one point they were the strength of the family they held the family together they provided for the family they pushed their bodies to the maximum to provide for the family sleepless nights overtimes excessive work it has worn them out the bodies don't function the way it used to that excessive work trying to provide for the family has led to problems in their bodies where they cannot function by themselves anymore they are dependent pray for them a great treasure of faith was handed over to you from them a great treasure of blessings were handed over to you from them today you have what you have because of what they did how hard they worked how faithful to god they were how much they sacrificed of themselves and that is why we have what we have So for those of our elderly who are alive who might be even with us in our own homes or maybe they are in a far away land back home today tell the lord lord for the times when i've complained about them got irritated with them i say sorry i shouldn't have done what i did I shouldn't have said what I said. I shouldn't have got so irritated and been so impatient with them. I pray, Lord, that you bless them. This prayer of blessing from my heart to theirs. Bless them, Jesus. I pray to you.
Lord Jesus, if at all they have shed a tear because of me, they have wept because they felt I never cared for them, or they have wept because I said words that were very harsh, that were unkind. And I know that they hurt when I said what I said. For any tear that they have shed because of me, that I didn't respect who they were, I didn't respect their age, and with carelessness, I treated them in a way I should never have done. For every tear that I've been responsible for, I pray, bless them, Jesus. Bless them, Jesus. Bless them, Jesus. Bless them, Jesus. Lord Jesus, their bodies are weak today. I can see them going through so much of pain. They're not able to do the things they did before. And I feel helpless when I see them in that pain. These bodies that carried me, that worked for me, Today this body is lying there wasting, but spiritually they have put every day so much into my life. If it is your will to give them enough strength in their bodies to be able to do what they need to do, I pray let your healing touch come upon them to give them some respite some relief from the pain in their body. Bless them, Jesus. We pray today, Lord, for the souls of all those elderly who passed away in our family, especially those who went away sad and broken, who felt that they were never loved, that they were never respected. They spent their last few days in that grief and sadness. Those of our elderly in our homes who actually passed away lonely. They were always there for us. But when it came to their turn, they were all by themselves. For all those who passed away in our families, the elderly who passed away, 
if at all there was sadness if at all i did mistreat them ill treat them i didn't respect them i didn't say a good word to them i pray for their soul today bless them jesus let them find their union with you bless them jesus offering all of them into the presence of the Lord and offering our families let us pray the litany to the holy family Lord have mercy Lord have mercy Christ have mercy Christ have mercy Lord have mercy Lord have mercy Christ hear us Christ graciously hear us God the father of heaven have mercy on us God the son redeemer of the world have mercy on us God the holy spirit have mercy on us Holy Trinity one God have mercy on us Jesus Mary and Joseph pray for us Jesus Mary and Joseph most worthy of our veneration pray for us Jesus Mary and Joseph call the holy family from all time pray for us Jesus Mary and Joseph son mother and head of the holy family pray for us Jesus Mary and Joseph divine child pure spouse and chaste spouse pray for us Jesus Mary and Joseph restorers of fallen families pray for us Jesus Mary and Joseph bless image of the blessed trinity here on earth pray for us holy family tested by the greatest of difficulties pray for us holy family with much suffering on the journey to bethlehem pray for us holy family without a welcome in bethlehem pray for us holy family visited by the poor shepherds pray for us holy family obliged to live in a stable pray for us holy family praised by the angels pray for us holy family venerated by the wise men from the east pray for us holy family greeted by the pious simeon in the temple pray for us holy family persecuted and exiled to a foreign country pray for us holy family hidden and unknown in nazareth pray for us holy family faithful in the observance of divine laws pray for us holy family perfect model of the christian family pray for us holy family center of peace and concord pray for us holy family whose protector is a model of paternal care pray for us holy family whose mother is a model of maternal diligence pray for us holy family whose divine child is a model of filial obedience pray for us holy family poor in material goods but rich in divine blessings pray for us holy family as nothing in the eyes of men but so great in heaven pray for us holy family our support in life and our hope in death pray for us holy family patron and protector of our congregation pray for us jesus mary and joseph pray for us lamb of god who takes away the sins of the world spare us o lord lamb of god who takes away the sins of the world hear us o lord lamb of god who takes away the sins of the world have mercy on us Christ hear us Christ graciously hear us let us pray O God of infinite goodness and kindness who has deigned to call us to this family give us the grace to venerate Jesus Mary and Joseph so that imitating them in this life 
we may enjoy with them the life to come. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us receive the Lord's blessing. Down in adoration falling Low the sacred host we have given them bread from heaven having in itself all delight Lord Jesus Christ you gave us the Eucharist as the memorial of your suffering and death may our worship of this sacrament of your body and blood help us to experience the salvation you won for us and the peace of the kingdom where you live with the Father and the Holy Spirit one God forever and ever. Mother, intercede and pray for us. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Dear brothers and sisters, just for an announcement for those of you who usually don't stay on for the Mass, that we will be on 31st, we'll be having, that's tomorrow, we'll be having the our New Year service here in the retreat center from 10 o'clock at night um, with the Thanksgiving adoration and the Holy Mass, uh, the New Year Mass. So please do join us over here at the retreat center that is from the 31st, that's tomorrow in the evening from 10 o'clock onwards. It will finish around 1 a.m. So please do um, join us here in person at the retreat center for this service and we are also starting our residential retreat here in the retreat center January 11th. We will have our first residential retreat here. Father Augustine Waluran will come as well. And we will be having our first residential retreat, which will be an inner healing retreat from the 11th to the 14th. That's Thursday night till Sunday evening. So please do join us for that as well. So this is just for those who usually don't stay for the Mass, so you don't get to see the announcements or hear the announcements. We will now prepare ourselves to celebrate the Eucharist.
when a profound silence covered all things and night was in the middle of its course your all powerful word o lord bounded from heaven's royal throne in the name of the father and of the son and of the holy spirit amen the grace of our lord jesus christ and love of god and the communion of the holy spirit be with you all and with your spirit good morning my dear sisters and brothers and dear families good morning father as we are celebrating this eucharist let us continue to offer as we uh, did during the time of our retreat our uh, elders in the family let us remember them and pray for them and we pray that the lord stretch out his hand upon them and through miracles and wonders and do miracles and wonders in their life and lord shower his blessings and his mercy into their lives through us who are with them and who are close to them we pray for that special grace to keep them close to our heart to love them and to care for them and any feeling negatively affecting us as to they are kind of burdens unto us maybe we don't have time we are fed up tired we shall ask the lord to strengthen our heart strengthen our life to love them and to care for them and to have a heart always grateful to the lord for all the blessings the lord has showered upon our lives through the elders in our family let's close our eyes for a moment bringing at the altar of the lord all our prayer intentions pray for our family pray for our personal intentions please say a prayer for divine retreat center colombo and all the prayer intentions that we have been receiving here let's ask our heavenly father to forgive our sins and to make us worthy to celebrate the sacred mysteries of our salvation with a contrite heart we pray together i confess to almighty god and, and to you my brothers and sisters that i have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words in what i have done and in what i have failed to do through my fault through my fault through my most grievous fault therefore i ask blessed mary our virgin all the angels and saints and you my brothers and sisters to pray for me to lord our god may almighty god have mercy on us forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life amen lord have mercy Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace to people of good will we praise you we bless you we adore you we glorify you we give you thanks for your great glory lord god heavenly king o god almighty father lord jesus christ only begotten son lord god lamb of god son of the father you take away the sins of the world have mercy on us you take away the sins of the world receive our prayer you are seated at the right hand of the father have mercy on us for you alone are the holy one you alone are the lord you alone are the most high jesus christ with the holy spirit in the glory of god the father amen let us pray grant we pray almighty god that the newness of the nativity in the flesh of your only begotten son may set us free for ancient servitude holds us bound beneath the yoke of sin through our lord jesus christ your son who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the holy spirit one god forever 
and ever. Amen. Whoever does the will of God abides forever. A reading from the first letter of St. John, chapter 2, verses 12 to 17. I am writing to you, little children, because your sins are forgiven for his name's sake. I am writing to you, fathers, because you know him who is from the beginning. I am writing to you, young men, because you have overcome the evil one. I write to you, children, because you know the Father. I write to you, fathers, because you know him who is from the beginning. I write to you, young men, because you are strong, and the word of God abides in you, and you have overcome the evil one. Do not love the world or the things in the world, if anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the desires of the flesh and the desires of the eyes and pride of life is not from the Father, but is from the world. And the world is passing away along with its desires. But whoever does the will of God abides forever. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Responsorial Psalm. response is, Let the heavens rejoice and the earth be glad. Let the heavens rejoice and earth be glad. Give the Lord, you families of peoples, give the Lord glory and power. Give the Lord the glory of his name. Response. Let the heavens rejoice and earth be glad. Bring an offering and enter his courts. Worship the Lord in holy splendor, O oh, tremble before him all the earth. Response. Let the heavens rejoice and earth be glad. Say to the nations, the Lord is king, the world he made firm in its place. He will judge the peoples in fairness. Response. Let the heavens rejoice and earth be glad. Acclamation. Alleluia, 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 praise ye the Lord. Alleluia, 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 praise ye the Lord. A holy day has dawned upon us. Come, you nations, and adore the Lord. Today a great light has come upon the earth. Alleluia, 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 praise ye the Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. At that time there was a prophetess, Anna, the daughter of Phanuel of the tribe of Asher. She was advanced in years, having lived with her husband seven years, from when she was a virgin, and then as a widow until she was 84. She did not depart from the temple, worshipping with fasting and prayer night and day. And coming up at that very hour, she began, she began to give thanks to God and to speak of him to all who were waiting for the redemption of Jerusalem. And when they had performed everything according to the law of the Lord, they returned into Galilee, to their own town of Nazareth. And the child grew and became strong, filled with wisdom, and the favor of God was upon him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. My dear sisters and brothers in Christ, we all have come through that time of pandemic where many of us were, have gone through these lockdowns 
and found ourselves having a lot of time rather than usual days when you were working in the office coming back and you're tired and a little bit of work at home and you sleep next day so you had a pattern and immediately that was disturbed and you found yourself a lot of time and not able to use how that time could be used so some of them started painting their home some of them cleaning but there is no idea when this uh, this pandemic is going to stop or finish and then the r- daily routine is starting and many who spoke to us said father we do not know what to do because we cannot go anywhere we cannot do anything because it's all limited at home and we get to see more often people husband and wife and slowly starting issues so there is something that that everyone experienced at that time was how to spend their time they could not they did not have enough things to focus to do and some of them ended up addicted to games online games some of them started new um new habits some good some bad so it it affects when we have time and when we do not know what to do it can take us through different paths good sometimes very bad I remember when uh, we were having holidays uh, when i was a teenager there was a time i didn't have couple of days i didn't i could not go anywhere or my dad did not send me to my mother's so house usually i go and stay there and i had a lot of time did not go to gay play and all those things so the thing i did was i had a radio there a transistor radio and there was a school driver as well so i started my time spending with the radio opening closing dismantling putting back and the evening when the dad came when my dad came and he wanted to turn on the radio the radio would turn on but never tune so that was how i spent so there is something that is happening within us when we do not know the focus can change we can end up doing certain things that we don't want but sometimes that we give we get some pleasure in the in the gospel passage which we read today we can see a prophetess anna who was a widow after 7 years of marriage when she was very young and then now 84 she has spent a long time and the word of god qualifies she spend her time in prayer and fasting and never leaving the temple if we look at her life so much of sorrow losing her husband being a widow from a very young age she could be doing something else going away from god maybe that we see these days in our life when there is lot of sorrow coming into our life which we do not expect unexpected when it comes we can some of us easily ask questions lord why is it we complain and we tend to break away from that spiritual connections and we end up in certain things that we don't we don't re- the lord does not approve but we enjoy but here anna she never went away from the temple praising god worshiping god in prayer and fasting she never lost that focus she always was with god never ever moved away from prayer and fasting in the old testament in the old testament exodus chapter 32 where they make that golden calf where they make the golden calf verses 23 we would read why Aaron made that golden calf 40 days and 40 nights Moses was in the mountain with the God with God and then the people who were waiting for Moses to come down they could not find Moses coming they did not find any trace of Moses coming down they did not know what happened of him and so they asked Aaron make us gods and that is how they started or maybe the first instance of idol worship in the life of israel they did not know what is going to happen with moses and he is not coming down so they started 
they they focus changed they could not wait any more they could not stay connected to god here we would see a woman prophetess anna who is never ever taking focus away from the lord waiting on the lord so patiently in prayer and fasting my dear sisters and brothers i feel and i believe the word of god is addressing something that we go through everyday life in our everyday life sometimes we are fed up of waiting on the lord for we prayed and we have put forward our intentions but we don't see any fruits or any trace of god having heard my prayer and granting my prayer so it's 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 a possibility in our life that we lose that connection with god and go after our own ways go after our own solutions but here when we reflect upon prophetess anna who could see jesus the salvation that was the result and the fruit of her patient waiting in prayer and fasting in prayer and fasting when we speak about prayer and fasting there is something that we need to ask we need to learn prayer and fasting together holds us holy in our life we read in matthew chapter 17 verses 21 where jesus speaks to his disciples about that boy who was brought to the disciples a possessed boy they could not cast out the demon and when jesus comes down after the transfiguration jesus saying without prayer and fasting these will not go out prayer and fasting keeps the evil spirit away from me evil away from me sin away from me meaning someone who is praying and fasting worshiping god they will keep themselves holy and here prophetess anna by prayer and fasting being in the temple of god worshiping he herself she herself kept patiently waiting on god not only just waiting waiting in holiness for the lord so the lord is asking today as we reflect on this gospel passage wait for the lord patiently and in holiness do not let your focus be changed into the pleasures of the world patiently wait for the lord in holiness and the lord will answer your prayers and the lord will come before you so let us pray god our heavenly father we face the same problem of waiting in our life sometimes we are so fed up sometimes we are so disturbed because waiting for a long time we do not see any answer any change any fruit of our prayer but lord prophet as anna who could see the salvation that she was expecting the people of god was expecting there was a fruit of her patient and holy waiting with prayer and fasting jesus as we continue to wait upon you as we continue to wait for answer from you give us a grace to focus on that connection holy connection with you o oh lord let it never break we make our prayer through christ our lord amen, amen. I wait for you There is no one else who satisfies my soul it longs for you like the deep panting for the water
Pray, brethren, that this my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Receive with favor, O Lord, we pray, the offerings of your people, that what they profess with devotion and faith may be theirs through these heavenly mysteries, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For on the feast of this awe-filled mystery, though invisible in his own divine nature, he has appeared visibly in ours, and begotten before all ages, he has begun to exist in time, so that, raising up in himself all that was cast down, he might restore unity to all creation, and call straying humanity back to the heavenly kingdom. And so, with all the angels we praise you, as in joyful celebration, we acclaim... You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples saying take this all of you and eat of it for this is my body which will be given up for you in a similar way when supper was ended he took the chalice and once more giving thanks he gave it to his disciples saying, Take this all of you and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, Malcolm Cardinal Ranjith, Archbishop, the Auxiliary Bishops and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, 
with Saint Vincent de Paul and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Saviour's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. So let us offer each other a loving sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take, take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, who by the will of the Father and work of the Holy Spirit, through your death gave life to the world, free us by this your most holy body and blood from all our sins and from every evil. Keep us always faithful to your commandments and never let us be parted from you. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. May the body and blood of Christ keep us all safe for eternal life. Amen. Amen. Act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are truly present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things and I desire earnestly to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as you are already there in my heart. I unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. I feel treason I feel treason
from his fullness we have received grace upon grace let us pray o god who touch us through our partaking of your sacrament work we pray the effects of its power in our hearts that we may be made fit to receive your gift through this very gift itself through Christ our Lord amen the lord be with you and with your spirit may the almighty god bless you the father and the son and the holy spirit amen the mass is ended let us serve the lord in love and peace thanks be to god pray for priests o jesus eternal priest keep all your priests within the shelter of your sacred heart where none may harm them keep on staying the anointed hands which daily touch your sacred body keep on sunny their lips purple with your precious blood keep pure and unearthly their hearts sealed with the sublime marks of your glorious priesthood let your holy love surround them and shield them from the world's contagion bless their labors with abundant fruit and may the souls to whom they have ministered to be their joy and consolation and in heaven their beautiful and everlasting crown o mary queen of the clergy pray for us and obtain for us many holy priests amen so dear friends once again the announcement that tomorrow we will be having the end of the year so we'll be having the service here at the retreat center from 10 o'clock in the evening at night till around 1 o'clock so we'll start with the rosary the praise and worship then the thanksgiving adoration and then the holy mass so please do join us here at the retreat center that's the 31st and the next online retreat will be from the second onwards so first morning we will not be having an online service on the first morning because we are having the evening the night service but on the first morning we'll not have an online service the next retreat will start the online retreat will start from the second and it will be on the power of god's word knowing the significance of god's word for us and learning how to use the power of god's word so please do join us for that and let others know about it as well um the next one day retreat what we are going to do from the from 2024 beginning 2024 for our one day retreats it will all be on the first weekend of the month it will be the first friday sacred uh, devotion to the sacred heart of jesus then the first saturday the devotion to the immaculate heart of mary and the first sunday will be the devotion to the holy trinity so it will be on all the three different languages that is on sinhala tamil and in english so please do join us the next one will be on the 5th that will be in sinhala on the 6th it will be in tamil and on the 7th it will be in english so on the 7th it will be the devotion to the holy trinity from 9 to 4 here in the retreat center so please do come in each of these devotions has its own special graces and anointing that comes with it so please do join us for these devotions to the one day retreat devotions to the sacred heart of jesus the immaculate heart of mary and the holy trinity the first residential retreat in the retreat center will be from the 11th of january you will have to book in early previously before you can uh, come here to the retreat center so that is jan 11th to jan 14th and that is um, an inner healing retreat the one day retreats that we have in the smaller sessions shorter sessions that we have gives us a taste but if we really want to experience the powerful presence of jesus life conversions and real change it will happen in a residential retreat so please do join us for the residential retreat the yearly calendar for the residential retreat has been uh, put up as well so you'll know the retreats that we have all through the year so that you can plan if you're from overseas especially you would like to plan and come you can do that as well god bless you all have a blessed day god bless you father oh lord my god when i in awesome wonder consider for the works thy hands have made i see
to Saint Michael. Saint Michael the Archangel, defend us in the day of battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all evil spirits who wander through the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen.